Hello and welcome to another World of Warplanes video with me, Sir Ten Death. Very recently I reviewed a German heavy fighter that was the BF-110B. And today I'm looking at another heavy fighter. It's a British one this time. It's the Tier 5 Bristol Bowfighter. And if you saw my last review of heavy fighters, you'll know I'm not much of a heavy fighter player. But I am trying to broaden my horizons a bit and show other people what these planes can do in the game. So... As ever, we're going to be looking at some gameplay here and talking about the plane's strengths and weaknesses along the way, what it does so well, what it maybe doesn't do as well, and comparing its stats and talking about uh, what, its, what its stats are like compared to one or two other planes. So, I've already mentioned then, this is a Tier 5 Heavy Fighter on the British line. I have to say I was looking forward to reviewing this because in battle I've met these so many times and often I've been on the wrong end of them. They seem to be extremely damaging. I've been shot down by these things so many times. Having said that, I've also managed to shoot down quite a lot of them and I'll get into the reasons why that is later on. So let's chat about its stats then as the gameplay gets underway. It has got 420 hit points at tier 5, which is it's not bad at all given that most light fighters have got uh, half of that then it means you're a lot more durable, you can take a bit more of a beating. But of course you are a much larger target and much slower, so you can't exactly dodge those bullets very easily. Its manoeuvrability rating, unsurprisingly, is only 31. This is a great big lumbering beast that is not designed to nip in and out of combat easily. It's very much designed to do a bit more of uh, zoom and boom stuff, to shoot, go in there, shoot things and zoom past them, turn around and make a pass. And you'll see an example of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to get some of you in my sights, put a bit of damage on him. In a light fighter, I would have turned back on him and tried to, uh, to, to go straight on his tail. With this, I can't, so I'm going to go past him a bit and then just look for alternative targets. Now, I could still be, and I am still learning what to do with these, just dumping the bombers down there. And I find that what I'm learning to play is to do as much damage as I can to somebody as I go up close to them, like this guy here. But once I can't get on his tail anymore, I just go past him. If I can switch to the rear guns and do a bit more damage, I will, which is what I've just done there, and then make sure I've got well clear of them before I turn around and make another pass. And this is uh, how I'm learning to play these. I have been watching one or two other players who play these very well, who play heavy fighters very well, and this is what they do. Rather than spending time directly in the centre of a, an area, they tend to, uh, to make a pass right through it, strafing damage on whatever gets in their way. Uh, there's a gear guy here, so he's going sideways on so I can get him in my sights. Hopefully, finish them off. There you go. Now, that's just put me on the 1,000 combat points, and it's a very unspectacular game so far, but I can look for another target, whoever happens to be in front of the plane. Put as much damage down on this guy as I possibly can. The guns on this can, and I just have to take somebody out quite easily, puts me on nearly 2,000 combat points before I make another pass. So, I've mentioned its manoeuvrability. Its turn time is 14.9 seconds, which is far from spectacular, but it could be worse. Um, we will talk about comparisons to other heavy fighters a little bit later, and there are some that are a bit worse than that. So 14.9 is not terrible. Its suggested altitude is to be playing up there on higher than this, around 1500 metres. But, as you often find in this game, you've obviously got to go where the combat is. If I sit there 1500 metres up, waiting for somebody to come up there, I could well be doing nothing at all in this game, so... If all of these light fighters and multi rolls are coming down here to 400 meters, I have to come down there and do some damage to them. And that's the way I'm playing this. I'm just going to go back and forward across this area, shooting whatever happens to pass in front of me. If they go behind me, switching to the rear guns as best I can and uh, trying to put damage on them. Its speed is, uh, when not boosted, around about 410 kilometers per hour, which is not, not bad at all. I tried to rocket that guy there, but unfortunately I've got, got it completely wrong. It's quite hard to, uh, to rocket somebody, I personally find. Um, and when you upgrade the engine, which can be upgraded, that pushes that basic speed up to about 430, which is a little bit better. Its maneuverability won't change because there's only one airframe, there's no airframe upgrade for this, so you're stuck with that as it is. Let's chat about those guns then. Those guns, when you get the plane as stock, it's pretty workable. It has got four 20mm cannons and six .303 guns, so it is, it's got a whole host of guns. Now I've got somebody on my tail here, but unfortunately it's another bow fighter, so he's going to put a lot of damage onto me, a lot more than I can do back to him with this, this rear turret. But I'm going to try. Trying to get out of his way, but I'm almost dead. That's me out of there for our first, first sortie. But how do we do them? Well, we're on better side, around 6,000 combat points. It's pretty impressive. I can't really complain of that. So I'm doing my part. On the team as a whole, we're ahead a little bit at the minute, but it's a very close game, so we'll not judge that too early. 
So, yeah, it's got uh, 420s and 6.303s, which are quite nice. Um, neither of those can be upgraded. That's the guns you're stuck with on the front. But what can and very much should be upgraded is that rear turret. You have got a .303 on the turret, and that upgrades to a different .303. And you might think, what's the point of that? The point is that the very first turret, the one you have initially, only has a 30 degree field of fire to the back of the plane. So unless somebody's right behind you, you can't shoot them. Once you upgrade that turret to the second one, the one I've got on this, you have a 180 degree. So that turret can spin pretty much to face right over the left or right wing of the plane. So you can get uh, a lot more maneuverability and get a lot more shots on the people from behind you. So that's the, that's the upgrades you've got then. Other than that, let's talk about the ordnance. You can, of course, play this with no outboard ordnance if you wish to. Um, or you can fit it with, uh, for a small amount of experience, with two 250-pound bombs. For another upgrade, you can go to two 500-pound bombs, which are quite nice. They can do quite a bit of damage. And it has got eight rockets, which really are designed for ground attacks. I uh, tried, as you saw about two minutes ago in this video, just to... Um, to do the best I could to, to throw them in the face of somebody heading towards me. That's a bit of extremist because they're not actually uh, air to air missiles, they're not really designed for shooting down aircraft. But if you have got somebody going head on with you and you throw a bunch of rockets at him, there's always a chance you can take him down, which I've tried to do. So, as you see, then this is how I'm playing this heavy fighter. In my last uh, heavy fighter review, the German, the BF 110B, I had a couple of people commented that they struggle to play heavy fighters as well and they have done them the same way as what I've done in that they swoop past the base shooting whatever in front of them before they turn around and come back and that's how I'm playing this and I'm getting a little bit better at it, a bit more efficient at it, I can tell that because I'm starting to get scores that are a little bit more respectable. So, um, can I compare it to anything? Well, the one I was reviewing the other day, the German one, is tier 4. I personally found the BF-110B more enjoyable to play uh, it just felt better to play, but that's a bit unfair to compare a tier 4 with a tier 5. So the only tier 5 I can compare this to is the premium one I have, which is the French SE100. The SE100, on paper, is worse than this in almost every respect. It's got less hit points, it's got a slower turn time, it's, um, other than that, it's about the same. Same maneuverability, same sort of speed. It's also got four 20mm cannons. The one notable difference that the SE100 has is its rear turret, or its rear gunner, is a 20mm cannon as well. So any light fighter that's daft enough to sit on the tail of an SE100 can get shot down very, very easily. Where with this, they can stay there a little while, because that .303 will chip away at them, but it's not going to tear them out of the sky the way the SE100 can. Personally, I'm not an expert with heavy fighters but I find the SE100 more enjoyable and, and easier to play than the bullfighter and I think that's because this is such a large unit it's such a big plane that you're, you're a massive target for everybody else now we've just passed 10,000 combat points so on the whole this game's going pretty well although having said that the uh, the enemy are looking now that they've got a bit of a grip on the game so here's going uh, face to face with somebody I tried to throw those last three rockets at him for the second time really just trying to see whether it works but uh, there's that, that gun there's an example of the rear gun going to work on somebody hitting all the time and it just it's, it's taking his health down but it's not going to just knock him out of the air straight away it takes a lot more to do that so the game is sort of uh, still very much in, in the middling at the minute and uh, i'm having a bit of a dog fight with this uh, this blen mf here and yeah we've got another guy coming towards us now I'm starting a lot of attention because there's, there's only me and one other from our team in this area and that's just been noticed i've got a damaged engine and all of a sudden I have become public enemy number one and I'm going to struggle to stay alive here. And the enemy have got superiority in the sky, so it's looking like it's Sayonara from me. Yep, that's it. I'm going down here. There we go. So I'm shot down by a bullfighter, unsurprisingly. I'm just going to cut to the end of the game here. We actually lost the game, but I finished top on the whole. With 14,000 combat points, Flames in the Sky award, great four fighter, first, first in the team. Uh, got the Winged Legend for getting 14 kills and the Guardian award. So on the whole, I played this pretty well. And I uh, can't really be responsible for everything the team does or doesn't do. Um, it's quite nice to play, but personally I have found that uh, the German Tier 4 one was better than this. But as I said, it's unfair to compare a Tier 4 and a Tier 5. Once I get the German Tier 5 unlocked, I'll be able to make a better comparison. And of course, the American, the P-38, once I get that unlocked as well, I'll be able to make a better comparison. But the Bowfighter, there it is. You've had a look at it and you've seen what it's all about. What it can do, it can put a lot of damage out if you play it in this boom and zoom style, which I'm trying to perfect. Um, but it's uh, also a big lumbering target and can be shot down quite easily by anybody that gets on the tail of it. As ever, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do share and subscribe and I'll keep them coming. Cheers now. Goodbye.